I have a Minolta MC Rocker X PF 50mm f2 lens here that I'm going to be disassembling. Although this is an MC lens and it has the metal body design of the later MCX lenses, um, it is much closer in how it's constructed internally to the later MD lenses, specifically the cheaper MD lenses. Um, it's, it uses it some adhesive internally, uh, so although it doesn't use the same amount of plastic as the MD lenses, I actually had some trouble taking this apart because of the adhesive use. I'm going to be fully taking this lens apart and getting access to the diaphragm, uh, mechanical components, and the body sections individually. I'll start off by going in on the front here and getting access to the front and the back of the diaphragm blades before I do anything else. On the front section here, I have the name ring going around here. And this name ring is actually what's held in place by the adhesive on this lens. It's a very uh, kind of a cheap design where they glued in the name ring on the back. And there's nothing really locking it down too well. And I had a lot of trouble removing the name ring because of that adhesive. So I actually had to dissolve it using some isopropyl alcohol that just dripped around the side here. Um, and I let it sit for a few hours and then uh, was able to undo the name ring. But for now, I'm going to actually undo the front glass piece, which is in here. There's this intersection with the glass and then this ring with the little steps and things in it going down to the glass. So I'll just undo this piece uh, with a spanning wrench going into the two divots here and here to get access to the front of the diaphragm blades. Okay, so there's the front piece of glass. Unlike the MD lenses, however, you can actually remove some of these other glass elements looking here at the front piece. Uh, the way you do that is on this front section here, it's a little hard to grip and actually do this uh, properly, but you can undo the, uh, the kind of grayish section here from uh, out from the uh, black section back here. So this front piece with the steps on it can be undone. And then once you undo that, the front element will just fall out, off and you can take off a few other ones and get in, into the back elements here. So you can actually cl clean inside the glass on this lens, which is a nice feature. We'll set that aside, have access to the front of the diaphragm blades here. But it's also very easy on this lens to get access to the back of the diaphragm blades. Looking here at the back, you can see that the back glass in here has another two divots for the spanning wrench. There are four total, but you want the ones on the outermost ring. So here and here, I'll just undo these as well. And there's the back glass piece. Much like on the front glass piece, you can also undo this further. There's the second set of divots for the spanning wrench on the inside here, which removes the little gray stopper that's just holding on this back glass element on the back here. And then you can undo some of these inner glass elements and actually clean inside of there. So it is more repairable in that way than the MD lenses where those two glass pieces are entirely encased in plastic. Now I have access to both the front and the back of the diaphragm blades. Because on this lens, the diaphragm is built into the inner part of the focusing mechanism like on the later MD lenses, uh, this is probably the best way to actually clean the diaphragm if there's just a minor amount of oil. The other alternative is to actually take apart the diaphragm itself and clean the individual blades. And I'll talk about that a little bit, but I won't actually be doing it on this particular lens. Continuing on with the disassembly, uh, the reason I took off the front glass piece here is, like I said, the name ring is actually attached using adhesive. Um, so it can be a little bit difficult to remove, um, but in this case I loosened it up already and it kind of just spins around here. This is not actually screwed into anything, uh, to my knowledge. So what you have to do is kind of grip under the name ring and it should pop out. It's just a little plastic name ring. But you can see there's still some of that adhesive over here and then some little parts jutting out that are actually locking it in place down here. But it's just a very cheap design and it made actually taking the lens apart very difficult. Next up, I'll remove this ring going around here that the filters and other parts were screwing into. This black ring. It's just held in place by three screws going around here, here, and here. And this gets us access to the diaphragm, combined diaphragm and um, 
inner part of the diaphragm uh, or focusing mechanism here and the inner outer section of the focusing ring down here. Now at this stage I want to flip it over the lens and looking on the back section I'm going to remove the mounting plate. It's just is held in place by the three screw or four screws going around here, 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 and here. Now this entire diaphragm or mounting place plate piece will lift right off here. This piece is also a little bit different than on the MD lenses um, in how it's set up. It's a little more complicated uh, piece, but overall it's it's fairly simple still. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about it on the reassembly. It's fairly similar to the MD, um, but it does look, uh, it's similar in how it operates to the MD lenses, but it does look uh, a bit different. And now I have access to the aperture control ring going around here, inner part of the focusing mechanism, diaphragm, and then the outer part of the focusing mechanism around here. I'll remove the aperture control ring, which is just sliding around here and there's a little slot over let me find where it is over on this section there's some grooves and then a little indentation where a ball bearing is making that clicking sound as it moves back and forth this just slides on so I'll slide the aperture control ring off unlike on the MD lenses this is a fairly substantial piece of metal so let me find where the there's the little ball bearing still in its indentation right there. So it's resting on the lens body itself. So now I'll just remove this ball bearing and set it aside. Set aside the aperture control ring. Next up, back on the front of the lens, I'm going to remove the focusing ring going around here, part with the rubber gripping section and once this piece is detached you have to zero the lens back to infinity but in this case it, this allows you to actually clean the focusing ring on its own outside of the lens the focusing ring is just held in place by three screws going around here here and here so I'll undo these three each of these screws I believe has little washers yes uh, right there as well and now I can remove this piece and have the inner part of the focusing mechanism. And to finish off the disassembly, I'm going to remove the diaphragm um, and combine the inner part of the focusing mechanism from the main lens body. Much like on the MD lenses, uh, 50 millimeter MD lenses, the inner part of the focusing mechanism and the diaphragm is held in place by this little track down here. So as I focus in and out by turning the kind of brass colored piece up here, um, the inner part moves up and down uh, along this little track. And there are three screws that are holding this bar here into this track. So I'll undo these three and that will allow me to access uh, the, or to actually remove the inner part of the diaphragm from this track. And now I can just grip the inner part of the diaphragm right here, the black section. Keeping the other parts locked in place, I can focus past here. And I'll kind of note where it fell out here. It's kind of like there. I'll just make a little mark up here. And this is much like on the MD lenses, a single piece where it has the inner part of the focusing mechanism and the diaphragm. Looking a little closer at this diaphragm piece right here, you can see that this is a five-bladed aperture that this piece has, um, which is different because most of the 50 millimeter MD and MC lenses have a six-bladed aperture. Um, so this is a kind of a cheaper design um, for this aperture. And uh, the way that this piece can be taken apart further is by undoing these two slotted screws over here and going in from the front section to actually lift off all the different plates that are holding the blades in place. Ultimately, this uh, grayish plate down here is holding the blades in place on the front. There's another plate on the back 
can kind of see through here um, with the stop down lever that's controlling the diaphragm over here. Uh, that also has to be removed, but if you can uh, lift off this top section by removing the two slotted screws here and the gray plate here, uh, then the blades will fall out of place and they can be cleaned on their own and you can reassemble it. But overall it's very similar in how it's reassembled to the uh, other uh, 50 millimeter MC and MD lenses. So that has the entire disassembly complete. You can see that just a, a very few number of pieces, maybe even less than the MD lenses. Some of these can be taken apart a little bit more, but there's really not a whole lot of purpose to a, taking it apart any further, in my opinion, besides taking apart the optics. So you have the optics here, the front and back optics, and if there's any uh, fungus or anything inside of these, you can actually take these apart, which is a nice feature and a nice difference compared to the later MD lenses. <coughs> Yeah, so you have those separate from the diaphragm or from the focusing part and the other mechanical parts like the inner part of the focusing mechanism and the diaphragm here. So that can be cleaned on its own as well. And separate from some of the body sections like the uh, focusing ring right here and the aperture control ring. Now I'm going to start on the reassembly of the lens. And this is a pretty straightforward process. Um, again, because there are so few parts, I'll start up by getting the diaphragm here back into the focusing mechanism. So I had made the little mark right here over by where the indicator was um, on the depth of field scale and how these two have to slide back together. These, they'll just screw together, so I'll get these two lined up. Just screw this in place. And looking at the back of the lens now, I want to have it spun around so that the little groove over here has the three screw holes in front with the middle one kind of in the center of that groove um, so that the bar here, get a, this bar can actually go into the groove on the outside and be locked down on the inside. So I'll just put this bar in place for now. Now I'll reattach it using the three screw, three screw holes going around here. All right, and next up I'll reattach the focusing or the aperture control ring in the back section. This piece has a, the uh, aperture control curve over here and that curve goes down into the indentation on the main lens body down here. This whole piece will just slide in place like this. But the complication for this is that the little ball bearing also has to go in place. And the ball bearing is resting on the main lens body right here. And it's getting pressed up against some grooves on the aperture control ring over here. So these grooves in here. So because this is such a thick metal piece, it's not very easy to actually bend it um, over uh, and get the ball bearing in place that way, but like you can on the MD lenses. So what I found is easiest is to first just slide this in place. And then I'll take the ball bearing, just get that ready. Now I'm going to find that little slot where the ball bearing has to go. And now I'm going to just lift the, up the aperture control ring slight, slightly so that I can see right where that ball bearing has to go. So right in, in here. And I'll take the ball bearing now and just position it down there so that it's in, a, in the correct position um, in that little indentation. And now I'm going to use a flat headed screwdriver like this to press down on the ball bearing and at the same time move over the aperture control ring as this is pressed down into that little pocket down there. And hopefully if everything worked this out properly, it should have the clicking sound and the that lets you know that the ball bearing is in the correct spot. Also now reattach the back glass piece at this stage because it's a little bit easier to put back in um, while this whole back section is exposed. So it just screws into the back center part. And 
And I'll lock it down with a spanning wrench. And to complete the back reassembly, I have to get this back mounting plate in place. So looking at the back section here, I have the lever over here on the main lens body that's actually controlling the aperture. And the two ways it can be controlled is the aperture control ring and then the stop down lever itself. And both of those are getting coupled into the aperture control lever over here through this back mounting plate. So on the back mounting plate, we have uh, this little pocket over here which is what is gonna sit on top of the aperture control lever. And that pocket is part of this big metal black piece here that's kind of curving around. Um, and that whole part is actually gonna control the aperture control, or control the aperture through the aperture control lever over here. So the two ways it can be controlled, you have the stop down lever on the back, which actually directly moves this bar and then will move the aperture control lever. And then the other way is the aperture control ring. And that aperture control ring has the aperture control curve over here. And that curve has this little post sitting in front of it on the little aperture control lever part here. So as this post moves up and down along the curve over here, um, as this ring rotates back and forth, it'll move the post up and down the aperture will also open and close as this post goes up and down along that curve. So those are the two ways things are getting hooked up. And there's a whole spring system over here, these wires that are holding the aperture open to be fully open in its default state. Uh, so that's uh, one area where there could be some problems if the wires in here are undone or something's not working properly, there's too much friction in here. Uh, th that could be a potential source of problems that may need to be repaired. But in this case, everything's working fine. So to reattach these two pieces, all I have to really do is get the aperture control lever down here into that little pocket up there and then line up the four screw holes uh, on the back section once that's all lined up. So that looks good. Now I'll reattach the back mounting plate with the four screws I can check and make sure that this is working properly, that when I hit the stop down lever, the aperture fully opens. And right now it's set at the minimum aperture. And then when I move the aperture control ring, it's also opening and closing. And it's clicking at every stop, it's moving at every stop. So that has the back reassembly all complete. Now to continue on with the front reassembly, also pretty straightforward. Uh, this is now the stage where we have to focus the lens back to infinity because I removed the aperture or the focusing ring here. So I have the focusing ring on its own and it's just going to slide back in place so that there are these two little stops in here on the focusing ring that are limiting how far it can focus in either direction. And it should be set up so that the stops are limiting it so that the indicator here is going along the numbers and it stops at infinity over here and at the minimum focusing distance of 0.5 meters over here. And now uh, I'll just get the focusing ring in some general position. I think it's a little closer to infinity right now, but I'll reattach it kind of in the middle still. So I'll get that in just any arbitrary position for now and just lock it down uh, temporarily. So it's reattached by the three screws in the brass colored section in here and they each have little washers that go with them as well. And I'll also reinstall the front optical piece here. So this front optical piece just screws in place into this diaphragm inner part here and can be locked down with a spanning wrench. So at this point, the lens is pretty much fully reassembled. Um, all that's missing is the name ring and one other piece up here, but all the optics and the mounting plate are in place. And so to focus the lens back to infinity, what you would do is you would actually mount the lens on your camera at this stage here. And you need to find where it's optically focused at infinity. So to do that, I would just mount this on my camera, then spin the focusing ring back and forth in here, disregarding whatever these numbers are saying, and find where it's optically focused at infinity. And once I've found where it's optically focused at infinity, let's say it's like here, then I 
would keep it in the same position, locked down, but loosen up the three screws in here just a slight bit. And now I will spin the focusing ring around independently of the actual optical focusing so that it reads infinity as well. So now when I tighten it back down, when the lens is over at infinity, it is also optically focused at infinity. And when it's in the correct focusing position, you should also see that it goes back and forth between the two extremes of infinity and the minimum focusing distance and kind of snaps at each end when you hit and that lets you know that it's properly focused. The final steps of the reassembly, I'm gonna reattach this black filter ring holder. Just goes in, sits on top of here, and has three little screw holes rolling around there. And finally, just snap this name ring back in place. It doesn't screw in place, you kind of have to press it down into the correct position and I believe it just does rotate in here unless you were to imply more adhesive. So that's really the worst part of this whole lens is that name ring. This lens is very similar in its construction to the MD lenses and I would say that it's a slight bit more repairable but still not great. Uh, it does, by far the biggest annoyance with this lens is the name ring up here. In the video, I was able to just remove that name ring very easily, but it actually took me quite a bit of work to dissolve the adhesive and then loosen this up. And I had to use quite a bit of force to actually loosen up the name ring the fir first time. And now that I have loosened it up, it just spins around freely because I haven't applied more adhesive to lock it in place. So that's definitely the most annoying part of this lens. But unlike the MD lenses, this does have a lot of nice features like it uses the metal body metal body pieces in here, which just generally give the lens a higher quality feel. And most of the pieces internally are metal as well. The design is very simple, so it's not very many components uh, like the MD lenses, so it's very easy to take apart, but generally the, the higher quality metal components as well. And the real nice feature that does make this lens more, repa more repairable, in my opinion, are the optics, in that you can actually take the optics apart if there's fungus or anything inside there, and you can clean inside there inside the optics and then put them back together, unlike the MD lenses where the optics were usually encased in plastic. So overall, a uh, cheaper lens that is slightly more repairable than the MD counterparts.